The administration doubling down on vaccination recommendations for children. So we're joined in the house with a doctor, Dr. Carl Lambert from Rush University Medical Center. Thanks for being with us. Do you like when I say there's a doctor in the house? <laughs> yeah, cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. All right. We've heard more parents are less vaccine hesitant and they are actually willing to get their child vaccinated. Yeah. But the question is, is there any good reason you would not want to get this vaccine for your kids? That's a great question. So I think the, the same rules apply for our adults. So unless you have a severe allergy or absolutely an allergy to one of the components of the vaccine, it's overall okay. And I think it's a really exciting time that we're in because you know this, this vaccine rollout for ages five to 10, that could happen in the next week or two. Uh, so the benefits are very much so there. The effectiveness, the efficacy is very so present for our kids as well as our adults. So a good move to make. What about the booster shots? Because we've been talking about adults and we've yeah. said, okay, you can mix and match your brands. Yeah. If you got Johnson & Johnson, you can get the Moderna. Right. But do you think that we're going to have booster shots for kids? Because I know the dosage is so different yeah. for young children. So, it, you know, the jury's still out on that. So right now, the only guidelines that we have is patients who are over the age of 18 with underlying medical conditions, if you're over the age of 65, if you live in long-term care facilities, things of that nature. So we don't have enough data yet to really, to really say that. We're still in the phase where we're just trying to get kids vaccinated in the first place. Yeah, you're right. And, and again, it's still debated yeah. uh, across households. And, and sure. some people are deciding not to let their family come over for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. because, again, if you're not vaccinated, you're not coming to my house. And that, that's what we're hearing so much. Uh, but I had a question for you, Governor yeah. Newsom, proposing that there's a vaccine mandate for school children next year. Okay. Do you think that the COVID vaccine, even though it's still controversial to a lot of people, yeah. could end up becoming as common as, you know, measles, mumps, and rubella or uh, tetanus. Yeah, I mean, it's quite possible. I even think about the next couple of months that we're going into. So another reason why there might be a good push for vaccines now is because we know when weather gets colder, uh, that's when we see an increase in incidences. So again, uh, if we're even trying to talk about getting back to a sense of normalcy and really reaching that herd immunity, uh, than really getting every age group uh, vaccinated as soon as possible on a regular routine basis. Whatever that means as we get further you know, research and data around it, that would really be the best way to go. Yeah, it's just in, in, amazing how much the science is progressing or yeah. changing and new announcements are coming out every single day still. Yeah. Uh, this new subvariant yeah. is the, the latest uh, news, the Delta Plus variant, not to be confused with the original Delta Correct. variant. Correct. I, I don't even know how many we've had, how many mutations we've had, but CDC Director Rochelle Walensky uh, saying that there are a handful of cases here in the U.S., right. but we're not seeing the danger signs that we were in previous strains, correct? That's correct. So I think, I think the other thing that is do have to put it in context. So um, if you look at the research or just information that we have from the UK, where it's about 6% of those cases, mm -hmm. virologists and epidemiologists are saying that as far as transmissibility for this new Delta Plus variant, it's around 10% more transmissible than the Delta variant itself. However, we know that the Delta variant just by itself is incredibly you know transmissible and infective so i think that bolsters the case that we need to get as many people to consider vaccination as soon as possible because it's quite possible that there's good coverage even for these sub variants too i do have one follow-up yeah, for you sure. this is a surprise because i was thinking about it while you were talking <laughs> sure are we seeing a decline in the cases of covid 19 among children you know we are seeing a decrease in cases in general mm -hmm. but we know that covid is still present so it's still possible that it can be passed to other people so that risk is still there all right, Dr. Yeah. Lambert, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate it.